Sandland is probably a game that, as of right now, is going under your radar. It's due to release on the 26th of April. Same day as Stellar Blade! But I promise you that this game is likely going to be worth your time. From everything that I've experienced and have seen of this game so far, I would definitely say that this is going to be a sleeper hit of 2024. Now you're probably thinking Sandland looks oddly familiar. That art style, I've seen it somewhere. Oh, that's right, Dragon Ball, Dragon Quest, Blue Dragon, or maybe even Chrono Trigger. Sandland was created by Akira Toriyama. May he rest in peace. It was a manga series that debuted back in 2000 that ran for 14 chapters, and over the past year, Sandland has been picked back up, receiving an anime film last year, due to also receive an anime series this year, as well as a video game adaption. Now looking at the game, it is an open world action RPG. However, there's something unique about this, and that's that it is a vehicle-based action RPG. Bandai Namco recently released a demo for people to be able to try out at least the combat system and a little bit of the exploration side of the game, and I definitely do have some thoughts about this. Vehicles are the forefront of this game. This is what you're going to be using to explore the large open world and engage in combat. This is the aspect of the game that sort of makes it stand out in amongst other action RPGs. We don't really have enough open world vehicle-based action action RPGs on the market, and with where the industry is pumping out a lot of open world or action RPG games that are hack and slash, it's kind of nice and refreshing to get something like a vehicle based one with Sandland. The demo allows you to try out the tank, mech suit, and motorbike, though there are a lot more vehicles in this game, all that have different uses in regards to exploration and for different combat encounters. You can have up to five different vehicles equipped onto your quick select wheel to be able to spawn in at any time. Because this is an RPG though, you are able to customize your vehicles with all kinds of different parts that change the stats of the vehicle as well as different weapons that you can attach onto them. There is also cosmetic customization for your vehicles too. While the demo doesn't have the crafting system available, I would say there is likely one. You collect a lot of different resources out in the open worlds that will likely be used in order to craft new parts for your vehicles. And I have to say Bandai Namco have absolutely nailed the vehicle gameplay for Sandlands. Uh, all three vehicles that you can try out in the demo feel absolutely fantastic to drive and engage in combat, whether it be the tank that you're using in order to blast shells from long distances towards a pack of raptors, or to use the motorbike to quickly maneuver around the desert. The mech suit is great for close quarters heavy damage, as well as to be able to provide a little bit of maneuverability in case of needing to be able to dodge out of harm's way. It's sort of important that they get this aspect of the game down on pat because it's what you're going to be doing a lot of the time. There is no stiff tank controls or anything annoying like that here. All of the vehicles feel fantastic to use. Now you don't have to be in your vehicle all of the time, but the open world is seemingly designed around using a vehicle. You can exit the vehicle at any stage you want to, to be able to explore on foot. There is even hand-to-hand -hand combat. Parts of the game, from what we've seen in the overview trailer, are going to force Beelzebub into actual hand-to-hand -hand combat. There is even a skill tree here for both Beelzebub and his companions. This allows you to unlock new skills and abilities for on foot combat, which is seemingly sort of deep. There's at least like specific button inputs between the light and heavy attacks with pressing square and circle uh, that are activated within using different sequences of these button presses with even like aerial combat and aerial dodging. So I think that there is a little bit of a focus with hand-to-hand -hand combat in this game, even though the demo doesn't really provide that and more so focuses on the vehicular gameplay. Now, Sandland is an open world game, and from what I can tell, it seems to be quite large, and so it should be if you're mainly using a vehicle in order to traverse this world. This world is mainly comprised of a desert, you know, hence the name Sandland. There's going to be a lot of coarse, grainy sand that you're going to be uh, traveling over. However though, we have seen that there are other biomes within this game, like foresty sort of beachy jungle environments that you will end up exploring. But the one thing that does have me concerned about Sandland, just from my experience with the demo, is its open world gameplay loop. For any good open world game, you want this sense of encouragement for the player to explore, that there is meaningful progression behind exploring, and that there is constant content 
content for the player to engage in. From my experience with the demo, there were only a few landmarks that you could explore. You have towers that will uncover different locations on your map. You've got these very small caves that contain chests of materials and ruins that are more of the exploration side of the game from what I can understand. You either go off on foot to explore these or of course still remain in your vehicle. Some of these ruins even seem like they require the use of vehicles in order to traverse. Now this might just be for the purpose of the setup of the demo, just to trial out the combat and have just a teeny bit of exploration. The final product might be very different and from what I can see from the overview trailer, it does seem like that there is more content in the final game. You have things like races that you can engage in, an entire village that you can rebuild, even with your own house that you can fully customize with furniture. It seems like there's also a combat arena for both on foot combat and vecular combat on top of also boss hunts. But while I was exploring this small region of the demo, I did come across this feeling of sort of emptiness, a little bit of barrenness. I suppose that is accurate because this is just a desert, nothing but sand, sand and more sand. But I certainly do hope that the open world gameplay loop for the final build is engaging. This is incredibly important. As you are also exploring this world, you are coming across a wide variety of different monsters. Sometimes you'll even come across a boss monster. For the demo, you are locked at level 15. There is no XP gain, so I guess that will sort of incentivize exploring and also engaging in combat. It didn't really feel that satisfying to take down groups of enemies in the demo just because there's no XP progression at all, but obviously this will be different for the full game. Of course, there will be a main scenario in the game. The premise of this is to find an ancient lost spring. Essentially, Sandland is in dire need of water because, you know, again, it's very dry out here. People are parched, dude. So you'll embark on an epic journey to travel the world to find this lost water source. But I do hope that there is side quests. I mean, this is kind of a staple point of any open world um, RPG. There are villages and towns within Sandland with NPCs kind of roaming about. So I do hope that you can uh, interact with them and pick up different side activities from them. And lastly, I have to talk about the art style of this game because it just perfectly captures Akira Toriyama's art style in that 3D form. Obviously, Dragon Quest does a really good job of this, but I think Sandland is another shining example of it. The character models look fantastic. There's just so much charm behind them. All of the different characters and monsters have the black outline, cell shading type style behind them that helps them really stand out, especially uh, with the environment backdrop. The environment's interesting. It's kind of this realistic looking cartoony type visual aesthetic for the environment that just looks really unique with the more cartoony Toriyama art style character models that we have going on here. Overall, I think this game is visually gorgeous, even though looking at a lot of the environment, it is quite barren. It certainly comes across as a desolate beauty. I think overall, Sandland has great potential to be a hidden gem of 2024, and I certainly do believe it's a game that people shouldn't sleep on. I think so long as Bandai Namco have a good amount of content for the player to engage in with the open world gameplay loop, what we have in our hands right here is a decent video game. It's a welcome change of pace having a vehicle based open world action RPG so personally I'm incredibly excited. I definitely will be indulging come the 26th of April. However guys that's all for today. Leave your thoughts and opinions on Sandland in the comment section down below. I'd love to know what you guys are currently thinking about it. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to keep up with everything that's going on here. Thank you so much to my wonderful patrons. You guys are turkey-tastic. Appreciate the support. Be sure to check out my other social media platforms, but with all that being said guys, I'm Cynical, hopefully I'm on a damn good one, and we'll talk real soon.